Hey friends, so now that Ableton and many other DAWs have ways to use your mouse to create notes, to create modulation, to drag and drop chords, to drag and drop samples and loops, and so many different plugins that do all this modulation for you, is it really necessary to use a MIDI controller? No, it's not. You could create music perfectly fine with these modern tools using just your mouse. But in this video, I'm going to go over what advantages a MIDI controller can give you when it comes to producing music and how you can use a MIDI controller to not only speed up your editing workflow, but it can also provide you with a way to stand out from the crowd, making your music more interesting to listen to. Let's get it. All right, cool. So you can see I've got my nifty little uh, MIDI controller action cam down here. Sliders, woo. All right, so the first thing you got to do to take advantage of any MIDI controller is go up to your preferences go to the Link Tempo MIDI tab, and then down in your input ports, you'll see your MIDI controllers that are attached to your computer. Right now, I just have the Novation Launch Key MK3, uh, and you have to turn on Remote if you wanna do any parameter editing. You have to turn on Track if you wanna play notes. So make sure both of those are on, and you're good to go. We'll get back to control surfaces here in a second. Now, I've just got this really boring loop. Take a listen. So to me, this is a boring idea. There's not enough interest. There's not enough stuff happening. Like I, I, I need more ear candy than just this. And instead of going over, you know, playing a keyboard to program in both chords and melodies and drum beats and all that other stuff, that's not what we're gonna focus on. In this video, we're gonna focus on modulating parameters and this is one of the main advantages when it comes to speed that a MIDI controller gives you. So first of all, let's go into this bass. So right now I've just got this long chain of stuff. Okay, you can hear it, it just sounds like this. Now, if you've got your MIDI controller set up in a generic fashion, where none of your knobs and sliders do anything in Ableton unless you tell them to, there's a really fast way to get a lot of work done very quickly. And let me show you what I mean. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn this track down so we can focus on the bass. And essentially what we're gonna do is we're gonna find a parameter that we want to edit. And normally what you would do when you're in, in this situation is turn on your automation mode. You can hit the A key to do it quickly. And then just click on the parameter that you want. In this case, let's go ahead and use this bandpass filter. And then you would just use your mouse or draw mode to draw in a bunch of modulation, right? Yeah, you can do that. But at the end of the day, I like to play things and I like to have fun. So I'm gonna click on my MIDI mapping and I'm gonna click on the filter frequency of this bandpass filter. And I'm just gonna wiggle the knob. And as you can see, we have mapped the filter frequency to this knob. So now I can just go ahead and go up here and make sure that my automation arm is turned on. Also, I'm gonna turn off any of these track arm switches, okay? So now if I move this controller, we can see that line moving up and down, right? Whoop, 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 whoop. Super cool. So let's go ahead and hit record. And what this will do is this will record any changes that I do to this track. Here we go. Boom, there it is. That's the edits that I wanted. I just played it with my hand. I used my MIDI controller to play a parameter as if that parameter was an instrument. And so this process is so simple. I'm just gonna find another thing that I think should change or maybe something that would be fun to do and I'm gonna map it to a knob. All right, so maybe the next thing we'll do is we'll mess with the phaser flanger here. Now you don't have to do one parameter at once, you can do multiple parameters. So I'm gonna turn on my MIDI mapping and we're gonna go down here and we're gonna do feedback on the second slider here on the MIDI controller. And maybe we'll do the, the speed or the, the modulation speed, the frequency here on the third. So let's go ahead and we'll go back through and record this again. <laughs> right boom now i think the biggest hang up for people when it comes to doing it this way 
is that you end up running into modulation that you didn't nail. You didn't exactly like it. You felt like it could have been better. Well, that is so simple to fix. Let's go ahead and take a listen to this and maybe listen to a part that we didn't think went well. I'm gonna go ahead and just turn track three off for now. Good. All right, so right there. Maybe that was a little bit too much, too much pants, too much pants. So let's go to maybe the modulation because I think that was the thing that went up high. Now check this out. If this is too much, so you can always edit this stuff in post. You can always edit it after you've recorded it. So you may look at this and be like, well, how would I ever edit this? Look at all these little tiny dots. I'd pull it on this one and maybe this one, but oh, I pulled the wrong up, oh, okay. See, now maybe this would work, but let me show you something that's so awesome. You can just select an area of time, right click on the modulation and choose to simplify envelope. What this will do is this will remove, uh, it'll use some sort of smoothing algorithm to remove a bunch of these modulation points. Now look, there's only three, one, two, three. And they, they'll have, of course, some associated curve with them, but then you can just, you know, edit them down a little bit. We do the same thing here. We can say, all right, simplify envelope, bam, right? And then we can just unclick some of the ones we don't want. Now let's take a listen to this and see if we like it. Cool, that was better. Maybe just a little bit more. Oh, I like it. By the way, if you are interested in learning more about MIDI controllers, also if you're interested in learning about how I've created the sounds that I've made here, I offer Ableton online courses. And as much fun as it is to try to peruse YouTube, trying to find the answers that you're looking for, uh, it actually isn't that much fun, is it? My courses are designed to raise your skills quickly and efficiently in an organized curriculum so you can go from A to Z and learn anything that you're trying to learn inside of Ableton Live very quickly. Awesome, so if you wanna learn more about Seed to Stage courses, it's up here or down in the description. Let's get back to the video. All right, let's do a couple more. I really like this idea, so I'm gonna add like a quick shimmer reverb to it. <laughs> I'm not gonna do that that much, but that's a fun one. So let's go ahead and map that one to the next knob. Bam. Uh-oh. You gotta pay attention here. Do you see how it says CC73 and CC73? It happens to be that I have already taken this slider right here and mapped it to another parameter. I don't wanna do that. I wanna have its own slider, okay? So just be aware that this is just kind of showing you the number associated with each one of your uh, controllers, right? Uh, let's find one more parameter so I can do a, a, a sweep with two, at least two. I like to have at least two because guess what? It gets more work done. Um, let's maybe go into meld and we will change the rough with this slider and then maybe the shape with this slider, okay? So now we have three. Now we're getting wild. Let's do three different parameters all at once. Here we go. Okay, cool, so <laughs> let's look at editing this because right here at the end, I had a little bit of reverb before I wanted it, but it's so simple to fix, right? You find the parameter that you know you wanna edit and you just click on it. It happens to be that it was already up, but we'll get to that in a second. This is the note that I wanna fix, right? So all I gotta do is edit this in some way. Maybe I'll just hit backspace. This is another thing you can do. You can just select your modulation, and hit backspace, watch this. That will make the most simple envelope that there is just by deleting, right, all of the different breakpoints. So now I can just take this guy and go like this. Let's see what this sounds like. <laughs> that might be a bit too much. Wow. Oh, I love it. I love that. <laughs> that turned out pretty good, right? Okay, so maybe there's another another point where we can tighten the reverb up. Yeah, we can hear just a little bit of that reverb right before the downbeat. So again, I'll select this area of time, backspace, right? Perfect. Okay, so now that we've done all this work with the bass, let's move on to this instrument down here. In this situation, this is an instrument rack, and a lot of the mappings, there's one, two, three, four mappings that have already been mapped to various controls inside of Ableton. Now, I could go through here, turn on my MIDI mapping, and continue to use these sliders to interact with these 
knobs right here. But Ableton has a really cool feature called control surfaces. So if I go up to my MIDI preferences and I go down here and I choose the launch key MK3, if I click on this, now you'll notice that, I don't know if you saw the lights on my MIDI controller, but they all changed. Okay, so I can actually choose to use my MIDI controller to change these controls by default without having to go in and MIDI map them. Basically, if you see this little blue hand here, what that means is that the MIDI controller is now controlling that specific device. So if I click on arpeggiator, you'll notice that the hand is now on the arpeggiator. If I click on the instrument rack, it is now on the instrument rack. So what that means is that if I make sure that my controller is sending device controls, which on this control I have to hit shift device, now my sliders, whoa, now my sliders are moving the controls. Look at that, super awesome. Okay, so now let's just go through here and I'm gonna record using these four knobs this entire track. Now the final thing I'll say before we record here is look at this arm switch. Do you notice how it's sort of a darker red? What this means is that the MIDI controller is auto arming the track. And if I were to go ahead and record, watch what happens. It's erasing my notes. That's not cool. The way that you can get around this is either changing that option on the MIDI controller itself or just simply going up here and choosing MIDI Arrangement Overdub. And what this button will do is it will leave whatever available notes there are there. And you can go ahead and edit parameters without erasing the notes that are already there, okay? Instead, it'll basically just act as an overdub so you can add more notes if you'd like. But in this situation, we're just gonna add those parameter changes. So let's go ahead and do that. Oh, and one more thing I should probably do is turn the track back up. Okay, so the track is now back up. I'm gonna pull the reverb all the way down. Let's get these kind of like right here. Cool, all right, so let's go ahead and start. Boom. So I just did four parameters right there, super fast, okay? So now all I have to do is listen to this, and if there's something I didn't like about it, I can just fix it. Let's listen. Okay, <laughs> I think I could maybe ramp into that reverb a little bit better. So let me show you something else. I'm gonna select this reverb part, and check this out. Do you see all these different squares? Notice what happens when I hover my mouse over the squares. What this is indicating is that you can actually change this modulation uh, kind of in a skewed fashion. So if I were to pull down on this, you see how we're skewing the, the MIDI data? If I pull down on this one, I can make it higher or lower, right? What I'd actually like to do is select just this area right here, and I'm gonna ramp into this reverb just by skewing it out, right? Perfect, right? Kind of gradually going into that. Let's listen to this part. And I think I'd like my free rate to be a little bit faster there. So what I can do is I can go in here and of course, hit backspace. And let's just bring this up. Perfect. And, and yes, this instrument is coming in and out of the mix. It needs to be actually mixed. But at this point, I'm not worried about mixing. What am I doing? I'm having fun. I'm just throwing a bunch of effects on this thing and later I can clean up the mess. I'm doing this quickly. This allows you to write music faster, okay? I'm telling you, this is an amazing thing that you can do to increase the amount of fun that you're having as well as increase the speed upon which you do your editing, okay? And let me show you one more thing. So. Here's an Ableton operator. And in this situation, let's go ahead and we're gonna use just the modulation wheel and the pitch wheel to add a sub drop in here, okay? So what I'm gonna do is instead of using the modulation as to whatever it's mapped to now, I'm actually gonna click on the MIDI mapping and I'm gonna choose to add level. See where it says one slash one? That's usually what a uh, modulation wheel is. I'm gonna just use this to, I'm gonna add FM with just that knob, okay? And now another thing I wanna show you is that um, I've already went into the pitch options here with pitch bend and I've chose a plus 24 steps for the pitch bend. What this means is that I can go. I have a whole two octaves of range, which means I can do sub drops. Boom. All right, so let's go ahead and record this and I'm gonna use this 
these two controls to add some uh, flavor or fun um, to push and pull the energy of this track. Let's go ahead and do this. <laughs> okay, so some of those were better and some of those were worse. I like, of course, this one's fun. Right? Started a bit early, so I could just go in here and maybe just take the note. <laughs> right? So I think the point to understand is that you're not going to nail it perfectly. It's not so much nailing it perfectly the first time. It's learning to edit your edits <laughs> quickly and efficiently afterwards, right? So here, there's pitch bend data in here. Now maybe you're thinking, okay, I don't necessarily like how that pitch bend, I wanted that pitch bend to start earlier. So in this case, this actually is an envelope inside of the clip. So I just click on envelopes, I go to operator, and I see, you see how MIDI control has this little blue dot by it? It's just showing you that there's pitch data here, right? So this is the, the part right here. So again, you can do the same thing here. I can go in here and I can choose to simplify the envelope, and now, Maybe I want to start this a little bit lower, so. Right, and maybe another thing I want to do, I'm going to simplify this whole thing. I know that I wanted a pitch drop here. That was evident by my actual playing, right? I knew that I wanted to do this here. So that's the idea, right? But I'm dialing my idea in here by kind of changing some of these parameters. So, you know, maybe I'll go in here and I'll make this smoother and I'll make it drop faster. Perfect. And maybe I like the note to start right on the downbeat. So hopefully you're picking up on this process. Whether you decide to use your MIDI controller as a control surface or whether you just want to map knob for knob, frankly, I don't really use control surfaces that much. Mapping a knob for knob is just fast for me. I just open MIDI mapping, wiggle a control, and just go, right? At the end of the day, we don't want to do things that are going to slow us down. We want to do things that are going to increase our workflow, increase the fun, and make it so that editing is actually a fun and performant process instead of this really dull thing where you're just clicking a mouse and you know, you're know you you're half falling asleep at your desk, right? This can be something that you can do expressively, okay? And that I think is where music is headed. And I wanna say one more thing. This allows you to sound more original. If you're just simply dragging and dropping things that are perfectly on the grid all the time, perfect edits that are always like a 16th or a 32nd time division or triplets or whatever, at the end of the day, that's what everybody's doing. Get in here and use your hands. This will make you sound original. This will help you cut through the noise of just the same thing over and over and over again, right? This will help us sound original. Cool, so I should just mention one more thing. You don't have to spend that much money on a MIDI controller. You can find them for so cheap on the internet. You can probably find one with some sliders and some buttons or whatever for probably less than 50 bucks. And honestly, at the end of the day, like, as long as it's got those things, Ableton can connect to it and you can use it to reintroduce the joy of editing, right? Reintroduce this performant thing where you're using your actual hands to do things, right? It's not as easy to do that with the mouse. Some people are pretty good with the mouse when it comes to live recording, but I'm not. And honestly, I love sliders the most. Sliders, I feel like, faders, those are the best things to use for me. Uh, some people are better at knobs. I like sliders. I think that they're awesome, especially if you've got a long travel on them. Either way, I hope that uh, you reintroduce a MIDI controller into your workflow so that you can also reintroduce the joy of editing. At the end of the day, I don't like just clicking on a mouse forever. It's just, it's kind of soul sucking and draining and makes me fall asleep at my desk. So awesome. I hope that this helps you. If you like this kind of thing, like, comment, subscribe. You know what to do. Much love, everybody. I'll see you next time.